Honey, as you know, is the soul of our family. And for 300 years, it's been the custom and the duty of the Earls of Edensor to reveal it to their eldest sons at the proper time. Well, I'm all attention, Governor. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been curious to know the history of that picture. It's said to be the portrait of the abbot who ruled here at the time of the Reformation. Henry VIII took this abbey from the church and bestowed it on the first Lord Edensor, the founder of our family. Do you know all that? Oh, yes. But the picture is as old as the house itself. The abbot was killed on the steps of his own altar, and while he was dying, he's supposed to have laid a curse on our family. Well, I don't blame the old abbot. But how did the picture get here? The first earl had it painted, and hung here out of sheer bravado, just to show how little he cared for the curse. Good old sport. What was the curse, Governor? Seven, eight, and one before, cursed be the race of Edensor. After that, and never more cursed be the race of Edensor. Oh, that's interesting. What does it mean, exactly? It means, Ronnie, that the eighth earl will be the last to come under its influence. The eighth earl? Why, that... Yes, my boy, you will be the eighth. Oh, but hang it, we're living in the 20th century now. Surely you don't believe that... There are many things that are hard to believe, Ronnie, when you're young. Well, the family seems to have survived the curse up to now, anyway. The family survived. But strange things have happened to some of them. You don't remember your grandfather? No. I've never spoken to you of his death before, but I think I ought to now. It was rather sudden, wasn't it? Yes. He died in the very chair in which you are now sitting. Oh, I say. Yes. I found him there myself at midnight. He was staring at the picture of the monk. I shall never forget the terror in his eyes. It certainly seems odd. But probably there's some natural explanation. I hope so. Take this book. It's my duty to hand it to you, as my father handed it to me and as you will hand it to your successor. In it you will find the secret of the pointing finger. Guard it, my boy, as your ancestors have done. Oh, thank you, sir. Seems a bit weird. It is weird. But let's talk of something else. Have you quite decided when you leave for Africa? Yes, sir, tomorrow week. I booked my passage this morning. Oh, I half wish you weren't going. I'm getting old. I, I can't expect to be here much longer. Oh, nonsense. You mustn't talk like that, sir. I mustn't be selfish, either. I know how you've been looking forward to this expedition for months. Yes, it's my last fling. And when I come back, I'll be back for good. You promise that? You know, it's a bit lonely for me now, since your mother died. Anne's a good sister to me, but you understand. Yes. I feel that I'm not quite cut out to be the country gentleman, but I realize that it's up to me to come back here and carry on the same as the rest of us. Good. And there's one other thing. I'd like to feel that someday you'll pass on the family secret to your son. Well, that's a bit far off, isn't it, sir? <laughs> Maybe. But I wish you and... Mary? Yes. I'd like to see you two married. But you'd have to go far to find a more beautiful place than Eden saw. Good night, Ronnie. I'm going to bed. Good night, sir. Hello, Aunt Anne. The governor's gone to bed. He doesn't feel too good. Seems worried. He is. About you. I know. I feel an awful rotter running off to Africa just now. What do you think, Mary? 
Jolly good riddance. I hope you'll come back with a lot more sense. Impossible. I couldn't carry it here. Oh, bother the man. That letter seems to worry you, Mother. It does. It's from James. Mm. And what's our delightful cousin been up to now? Oh, the usual thing, death. He asks for 200 pounds to be sent by return of post. Well, that's pretty cool. Are you going to send it? No. Your father settled James Mallory's debt three months ago. I don't think he'll do it again. The fellow's a cad. Tear it up, Aunt Anne. I'm going out on the terrace to have a look at the moon. Why don't you go to bed, Mother? You look awfully tired. Ronnie's waiting for you. And it's a beautiful night. And I feel just fit for a real good scrap. Mary, must you talk slang? Okay, Mother. Uh, oh, there you are, Curly Mop. Hello, Mary Quackenberry. Give me a puff. Rotten smoke. Rotten smoker? <laughs> I say, Ronnie, what's that of your dad? Oh, the dear old chap's very cut up because I've got to go away just now. Oh, poor old uncle. Still as I told him. This is my last fling, and I'm coming home for good. You won't like that much, will you? No, but I can't expect to go on spending the whole of my life having a good time. I shall have to take my medicine. Hey! I suppose I'm part of the dose. If it comes to that, yes. They've matched it all out between them, haven't they? I suppose they fixed us up as man and wife before we were out of the cradle. Oh, yes. They always do. But of course, I shall be uh, the perfect husband. And if I'm not the perfect little wife... Oh, then you'll get... You try! <laughs> we are a couple of fools. Listen, Mary. We are going to do just as we like with our lives. Good. And just go on being a couple of chums. That's exactly how I feel. Pals. Jolly good pals. Good old curly mop. Hey, half time. But I want to see you come back safely, you know. Of course I will. Do you think I'm going to allow a crocodile to make a meal out of me? Well, if he did, you know that blighter Jimmy Mallory, our dear cousin, would step into your shoes. Hmm. I just go hot and cold all over when I think of it the next day. Enough. Come on. You mean if anything happened to Lord Rolling Stone on this year African expedition, Jimmy Mallory would be the next Earl Eden sort. You've got it. You're beginning to wake up, Grimes. And he's coming here to have a cup of tea with you. Entertaining the aristocracy like. Ah, well, I can't afford to be too particular. Not these days. But I'd like you to be hanging about outside while he's here. When is he coming? Now. And he's always on time. I'll up it then. in there. Oh, what a filthy place. It's too clean for some folk who come here. Come Delighted to see you, Captain Mallory. Won't you sit there? Oh, I must apologize for the condition of my little flat. I'm not quite so well off as when we last met. Savoy, wasn't it? Yes, I stood your dinner, champagne and all. Yeah, well, never mind about that. I haven't too much time. Okay, so we've been interrupted. Not at all. Well, Captain, darling, and what are you doing in Queer Street? 
when you might be enjoying the bright eyes of Mayfair. You can cut that out. This is business. Oh, fine. You know South Africa pretty well, don't you? Do I not? I wish I'd never left there. The last now time... Now, shut up. Listen. Have you read in the papers that my cousin Lord Ralston's off on a big game hunting expedition? Central Africa? I have. It made me think of you. Yes. Would you like to go very big game hunting? Meaning? We needn't beat about the bush. If anything happened to Ralston, I step into his shoes. Ah, yes, I guess that. Well, he's a youngster, you know. A bit hot-headed. Big game hunting's pretty dangerous. Fever's a nasty thing. There are lots of other nasty things, you know. Ah, cut the cackle. If anything happened to him, where would I come in? Could you do with a thousand quid? Do I look like a million dollars? For a thousand quid I go from here to Hades. And I wouldn't be too particular either about what I did on the way. Right. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Now Ralston sails next week. Look here. Sends it bar would be a good place to meet him. By accident, like. Quite. And don't forget, he's a bit particular about the company he meets, so you better put on your Savoy manner. I'll bear you in mind as a pattern, Captain. Well, do we shake? A thousand quid? A thousand quid. By St. Patrick, we do. Like two gentlemen. Right. Let's take a breather, boys. I should think we're about 30 miles southeast of Mumbulla. Well, we shan't make it tonight. No, worse luck. I'd feel happier if we could. I don't like the look of things, Lafon. You mean what Hansa told us this morning? Yes, I've just questioned him again. The boys are jumpy. They swear they've heard war drums. Come on. This is your third trip to Africa, isn't it? Yes, and I suppose it'll be my last. This is a great country, a man's country. Do you know I sometimes think it produced the greatest men at the lot, Cecil Rhodes. Sure, a great fellow. Yet to an Englishman, there's only one country, England. And to an Irishman, there's only one place in the world, the Green Isle. Sure, a little bit of heaven. It's a wonderful thing how your own country gets you when you're away from it. You know, a sort of lump in the throat. Ah, you're a dumb kind of kid, Ronnie. Sometimes you make me feel like it. Oh, I don't know. Well, we're just a couple of pals roughing it. White men in the bush. You said it. Just white men. What are they? Hmm. One of them is a book on our old family secrets. My governor gave it to me before I came away. Honestly, I'd quite forgotten all about it. The other is just a book of poems. Poems? Hmm. Well, my old mother used to read poems. Yes. Well, listen to this one. This is just how I feel, Pat. What is it you read? Something by Stevenson. Stevenson? Oh, he's the fellow that invented the steam engine, isn't he? <laughs> no, no. Robert Louis, the author. A wanderer just like ourselves. Well, what does he say? 
bed in the bush with stars to see. Bread I dip in the river. There's a life for a man like me. There's a life forever. Ah, Greek stuff. Yes, and it's clean, Pat. That's what I like about this life of ours. It's clean. Ah, it's clean. Yes, I wish I could go on living it. What's the good of wishing? I promised the governor that I would settle down and... Well, that's that. I get you. Do you want a match here? Thanks. That's a queer kind of ring. Fat? Yes. That's our family crest. It's like a hand. It is. A hand with a pointing finger. What's it say underneath? Oh, that's in Latin. It means, none shall take my place. I like that. Thanks. What's that on your finger? That? <laughs> I did that 20 years ago. I fancied myself as a tattoo expert. And I got a jolly good hiding for my pains. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about some sleep? Yes, if we had to get away at dawn, we'd better get a bit of rest, I suppose. Well, here it goes. He landed this morning. Oh, thank heaven. I hope he'll be in time. I think he might come home before. Oh, don't be hard on Ronnie. We know he's been wandering about from place to place. But he knew his father was here weeks ago. I think he should have returned then. He's just thinking of his own enjoyment. Now, Mary, that's not like Ronnie. I'll take this up to Arthur at once. Thank you, nurse. Well? How long did you give me, Doctor? Come, come. We can't have you talk like that. Rubbish. I know I'm finished. All I want is to be kept alive till Ronnie comes back. Arthur, good news. From Ronnie? He'll be here any moment now. Better than all your medicine, Doctor. Thank heaven you've come, my lord. I'm afraid it's only a matter of minutes. Why doesn't he come? Arthur. Ronnie. 
his mind's wandering. He doesn't know me. It's all over. Well, thank you, Baines. I hope your lordship can spare me a few hours tomorrow. As your family lawyer, there are a number of matters connected with the estate which I shall have to discuss with you. Why, certainly. I'm quite at your disposal, Branson. By the way, I take it your late father confided the uh, secret to your lordship. Secret? What secret? Your lordship must know to what I'm referring. Surely your father told you before you left for South Africa. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. You see, I, I was so ill in Africa that I can, I can hardly remember anything. It would seem to be an extraordinary thing if he hadn't told you. Yes. Of course, it must sound most extraordinary to you. It would really seem, in your case, Lord Edensor, that the secret has not been passed on. But even so, you must have heard your father speak of it. The secret of Edensor Abbey is as much a family possession as the Abbey itself. Yes, I heard him some, say some sort of thing about it, but <laughs> I'm rather hazy about the details. I don't suppose you know what they are, do you? No. I only know that there is a secret connected with that picture and that it is told only to the eldest son. Tradition has it but should it not be passed on, misfortune will follow. Oh, but surely you don't believe in legends, do you? Well, Lord Edensor, I'm just a matter-of-fact old lawyer, I know. But I have realized that there are some queer things in the world. Well, personally, I'm not the least bit superstitious. I never... What is it? It moves. I saw it. Did you notice anything? No, no, of course not. Oh, it must have been my fancy, but I could have sworn that that finger moved. Yes, fancy, of course. But it's strange, just when we were talking of the secret. Mm. You know the history of the picture and its meaning? No. Yes, yes, of course. I've heard it. Do you know, ever since that fever, I've... Uh, my mind's blurred. If I may say so, your lordship looks rather tired. Yes, I don't feel too good. I feel rather tired myself, so if you'll excuse me, I think I'll turn in. Oh, why, certainly. I shan't be long about it myself. Good night. Good night. Hello, Mary. Haven't you gone to bed yet? No. Too wonderful a night to waste. Mm. Is it Mr. Bryanson? Oh, Bryanson, not being of a romantic nature, has retired for the night. I'm not sure that you don't need a good night's rest. Oh, I'm all right. You look awfully tired. I've had a pretty heavy day. You know, there's so much to go into. These old legal documents. Tony, can you see that without your reading glasses? Glasses? Oh, I haven't got them with me. Anyway, I'm not going to read these tonight. You know, you have other duties as well as the estate. Have I? Well, aren't we supposed to be... Yes. I know. I want it to mean more than just the uniting of two old families. Why you are strange. Oh, I wish I were more certain of things. What things? Nothing. I can't understand you. You've changed. You take things so seriously nowadays. You never joke as we used to. Well, you're rather difficult to understand yourself. Mm, I suppose I am. But what made you change? Oh, am I very different? You are. Somehow, you're not the old Ronnie. No. I'm afraid I'm not. I used to pull your nose and ruffle your hair. I never do that now. 
Why not? It's a funny old world, isn't it? Once I never thought I'd want to cry moonlight and now... I haven't much time, so I shall tell Lady Mary I'm here. Certainly, Captain Mallory. Can I get you anything? Uh, no, thanks. Mary, how are you? I thought you were abroad. Yes, so I have been. I crossed this morning, came straight from Dover. Oh, let's go out on the terrace. Yes, I thought I'd give the family a pleasant surprise by returning earlier than I was expected. Nice to the family. Yes. I heard of Uncle's death when I was in Egypt. Of course, I came back at once. I was terribly cut up. Poor Uncle. Yes, very, very sad indeed. And Ronnie in Africa, too. Ronnie in Africa? Are you talking about Ronnie came back? Back? Oh, what's the matter? Uh, nothing but... Uh, I thought Ronnie was in Africa. You don't seem very pleased to see me. My dear fellow, of course I am. Very nice to see you back, Ronnie. And I'm glad to be back, too. Yes, I bet you are. Well, I just looked in to give my love to my dear aunt and you, and... Well, it's very nice to see you home again. By the way, I was thinking of, uh, thinking of inflicting myself on you for the weekend. May I? Why, of course, do. Thanks so much. Well, Aunt Anne's in her room. Don't you wish to see her? Oh, yes, of course. Yes, I'll go up. seemed a different man just now, Ronnie. You'd never have spoken to James like that in the old days. No. Things are different. I've never seen James so upset. He saw you, I mean. He was upset. What do you mean? Nothing. Perhaps he thought I'd never come back. I don't understand you. No. I realize that my return has meant changes in more lives than one. The biggest change has been in your own, Ronnie. Do you remember the last conversation we had before you went away? Yes. I expect I said a lot of things. What for the excitement of going... You said you hoped we'd always be what we were then. The best of friends. Pals. Pals. Oh, Mary, I wish... What are you going to say? Something I daren't say. Ronnie, I feel there's something you're hiding from me. From all of us. Why should I hide anything? I don't know. You used to tell me everything. Yes, I know. Ronnie, have you ever looked on the other side of a tapestry? Bit of a jumble, isn't it? That's it. The picture on the front is plain enough, but the other side is a jigsaw. And I feel that all of us here are on the other side. Mary, you're, you're letting your imagination run away with you. I can see the picture quite clearly. This old house and the garden. The meadows beyond and the distant hills. Oh, Mary. For the love of life, what's I hear? That dirty hound Mallard had the cursed immune to call me a liar. Me! You must be a mind reader. I'll smash his ugly mug when he gets here. 
he coming here? He's a... By God, he's coming here. And he'll get a warm welcome, me chambers. What's the matter, really? Pet, you haven't been the same, not since you come back from Africa last week. Spit it out. What's gone wrong? Ah, uh, lots of things. I'm different. I've lost me nerve. Oh, I don't know what's the matter with me at all. I've been thinking the same about you, too. You're getting soft. Soft, am I? Am I soft? I'm bad. Just a joke. Don't joke with me again. I tell you I'm different. I've lost something inside me. Here. You've never told me. Did that job come off in Africa? Yes and no. Did Mallory pay up? No. And he's dodged me ever since I got back. Mallory all over. And he sent me a telegram to say that I'm a liar. A double-crosser. And now he's coming here to tell it me to my face. And I'm off. I don't like these little friendly meetings. Trying around in case. Perhaps you'd better. I'm not so sure of my temper. If he roils me, I might hit him too hard. Mr. Mallard is here to see you, Mr. Lafon. I don't like you, Mr. Mallard. I wish you'd remember this is a, a respectable house. Ah, cut your tackle. Oh. Here's you, Mr. Mallory. Holy smoke, you're just in time for me to smash your ugly mug. What the devil do you mean by double-crossing me? Double-crossing you. Don't waste my time. You cabled me that you had... that Rolston had disappeared. So I did and so he had. Well, why did you like him? Now, look here, you can call me any names you like, but don't you call me a liar. The man you sent me to get was... was killed. Was he? Well, I spoke to him this morning. What have you got to say to that? Oh, listen, Patrick, what the devil are you talking about? Are you mad or drunk? Rolston was captured and murdered by Savage. I tell you, I spoke to him this morning. I'm neither mad nor drunk. I tell you, Rolston's dead. Well, then who the devil is this man? That's more than I know, but I stick me a mortal soul. He's not Rolston. Anyway, I can settle that in two seconds. Oh, huh? Never you mind. Can I see this fella? <laughs> not like that. I think you owe me a little money, Captain Mallory. I'll do what I can, but I'm as broke as you are. Thank you, Captain Darling. Now then, when can I see this gentleman? Well, I'll take you down to the Abbey this weekend. That'll give you a clear day to fix yourself up. I'll get in touch with you tomorrow. Everything nice and straight again? Oh, yes. What have you got in? Plenty. And I think that Patrick Lafone's going to lay his hand on more money in the next few days than he's ever had in all his natural. What do you mean? You've heard of the Earl of Eden Sore. Yes, quite a lot. You mean the bloke what you uh, lost in Africa? Yes, well, he's dead. But there's another, a fake, got back in his place. And I can prove it. Another bloke? What are you driving at? I am going to find out all about this fella. The Eden Sore to give a lot to keep a thing like this quiet. Blackmail, eh? You can call it what you like. But I know a good thing when I see it. Do you get me? As one gentleman to another? I do. Right. Well, now get me the pen and ink. Go on. Hello, Mary. What about a gallop? A lovely morning. No, I don't think so. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, this place suits me. I feel a different man. Yes? What are you doing this afternoon? I'm going to town. Oh, shopping? Can I come? No, thank you, Ronnie. I want to be alone this afternoon. I see. Well, I should be thinking about you. I should be thinking about you, too. Well, Kelly will curl him up. Curl him up? That's a new one. Is it?
the phone? Mr. Patrick LaFoe. Won't you come in? I've never had dealings with blackmailers before. So perhaps you'll save time by telling me just what you have to sell. My dear lady, you've got me wrong entirely. I've nothing to sell. Now sit down, please. Well, in the first place, why did you write to me? Because I hate to see a young lady like yourself deceived. Deceived? Your ladyship is interested in the new Earl of Evensore. You seem to know a lot about other people's business. Oh, I have to, the way I live. It's often kept me out of choking. Choking? That's just a little kind of sanatorium. Well, what is it you want to tell me? Just this, lady. This man's not what he said he was. To put it bluntly, he's an imposter. I don't believe it. I don't want to hear any more. How do you know he is? I see your ladyship's clever enough to guess he's not the same man that left for Africa. I didn't say that. No, you didn't say it. If I'm to believe you, where is Ronnie? What do you know about him? I was with him in the bush, and then I, uh, I left him. Something happened afterwards that I heard about. What? I'm afraid he's... I heard he was dead, killed by natives. Oh. Ah, no, don't take it so badly. So much has happened in these last few days I wouldn't be surprised if the real Edensor was alive and well after all. And is this imposter like you, out for money? I don't know that. By all accounts, he's not such a bad substitute. We must find Ronnie. If he's alive. How much do you want to keep quiet about this man? I see. You know, I'm not so keen on this anyway. Suppose I were to try to find out the truth and leave you to deal with the, um, the other. How does that strike you? I'll pay you anything. Oh, just me expenses. First class, not third. How much? Well, now I leave that to your discretion. Oh, first class. Thank you. And now you can leave things to me. Shall I, um... No, thank you. Good business? Oh, yes, good business. And Pat LaFone's a silly old fool again. First a young man, friendship. And then a woman's trust. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, don't forget, I've got to see him alone, to make sure. And that's all right, but listen. He should be able to recognize you at once. But he's pulling the old stuff. Malaria, can't remember a thing. <laughs> he might have thought of something newer than that. <laughs> Hello, boy. Hello. Up to? Uh, in a minute. Hello, uh, James. Won't you introduce me to your friend? Hi, of course. Uh, Mr. Lafoe and Lady Mary Stewart. I'm delighted to meet you, Lady Mary. I've heard an awful lot about you. Uh, excuse me, Mary, will you? <laughs> What are you doing here? I thought I could trust you. 
With your life, Lady Mary. But I didn't know you were a friend of Captain Mallory's. Nor am I. I'm working in your interests. But uh, he doesn't know it. Any news? Ah, well, hardly yet. It's but two days gone. But uh, I'm having the docks watched, and I've cabled to Cape Town. But why did you come here? Ah, well, now, I'll explain it all to you someday. I'm just keeping an eye on the darling captain. I'm so frightened. For the man in possession. Ah, trust me, Lady Mary. On the word of an Irish gentleman. Sorry to interrupt you, Auntie, but, uh, Ronnie, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. He tells me he knew you in Africa. Oh, certainly. Come along over. Excuse me. Holy Saints, it's himself. Or am I seeing spirits? Then it is, Ronnie. Or his ghost. Ah, here we are. Hello. Pat? We meet again. Ronnie! I'm glad to see you. Be God, you haven't altered a bit. When did you get back? A few weeks ago. Now, Mary, let me get you a cocktail. Can't you see these two old-timers want to be alone? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. All this is a bit different from the life we used to lead together out there. Yes, isn't it? Cigarette? Thank you. The last time we met was, um, well, let me see, somewhere in the back of beyond. Yes, in the back of beyond. Let me see now. Where did I pick you up? Wasn't it at uh, Zanzibar? That's right. Funny you remember that. Oh, I don't know. I was very glad of your company. We were going into pretty dangerous country. And I wanted someone who I knew wouldn't let me down. Aye, we, we had a pretty lively time of it in the bush, didn't we? You know, yes. I can't remember quite how we got separated. Nor I. Oh, wasn't it a native attack? <laughs> oh, yes, but, but after. Oh, I don't remember anything after that. I got malaria very badly. How I got to the coast, I don't know. You know, I never thought we'd meet in England again. Neither did I. You see, you used to hate the thought of coming back and taking up the reins here. Do you remember that talk on our last night out there? Some of it. What were we talking about? Oh, England and Ireland and... Uh, and you were talking bits of poetry. Was I? Oh, I... I must have had a touch of fever on me. What was that verse you liked so much? Some fellow named Stevenson wrote it. Oh, yes, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. He's a queer chap. You ever read his life, Pat? Oh, why the devil would I? But I liked that verse. What was it? Oh, you know, it's from the tip of my tongue. Can you start it for me? You look straight in my eyes just as I'm looking at you now. And you said something about stars. Stars. Under the wide and starry sky, dig the grave and let me lie. Was that it? No, that's not. No. Bed in the bush with stars to see. You've got it. Yeah. That was a great night. I was. That's the Edensaw ring, isn't it? Yes. Beautiful ring, isn't it? Ah, it's beautiful. And a queer motto. None shall take my place. It is queer. But quite to the point, isn't it? Just right. Ronnie. I think Ronnie is socially hors de combat for the rest of the evening. 
Who is that man he's talking to, Mary? A Mr. Lafone, one who met him in Africa on one of his expeditions. Ah, it's been grand talking over old times. Yes, but I wish my memory wasn't so rotten. Ah, well, I am pretty good at forgetting, too. Well, don't let us forget that we both need a drink. Faker, isn't he? Ah, sometimes I think he's Ronnie, and sometimes I think he's someone else. I can't be certain till I've seen him again. Well, you shouldn't have much difficulty. The guests have all gone to bed. He stays up late on the terrace. He's a pretty cool customer, whoever he is. I couldn't shake him at all. Oh, I got a bed. Don't forget, if you can prove he's a fake, we're on a good thing. I had to speak to you alone. Well. Ah, it's no good hiding the fact, Lady Mary. He's a fake. How do you know he is? He's the living image of the man that I knew out there. Not only he looks, but in a hundred ways. He knows every single thing we went through together. And yet by one little thing I know he's not the same. What shall I do? Who is he? Well, there's only one thing to do as far as I can see. To find the real Ronnie. Alive or dead. Ah, oh, no, Lady Mary, don't take it so badly. Please, come. Still a phone, I believe. Inspector, you've got nothing on me. No, not just yet, Pat. But there's plenty of time. I tell you, I'm on the level now. You won't be that until you're dead and buried. We don't want you yet. Ronnie! What's his name? He's a pal of mine, Ronnie. Ronnie Brown. What's he doing here? I left him in South Africa. This man was found half unconscious on the embankment. The only clue to his identity is this strip of paper with your address found in his pocket. This man probably came home from South Africa, fell into clear company down at the docks, was knocked out and left. It's the old story. I better tell you at once, Mr. LaPone. He's in a pretty bad state. His life's just about hanging on a thread. He wants the finest medical attention. He'll get all that, I promise you, Doctor. Well, I'll leave him for you. Come on. It's all right, Doctor. I know his people. I'll wire them at once. the broke you're supposed to have done in. Well, you've got him where you want him now. Mary will pay you well if you let him pay that. You know, the sight of you makes me sick. You yellow mongrel. You ain't pedigree yourself. You kept Mary? Is it right speaking? 
I don't like spitting on a pal. The man you're interested in is back from Africa. Got me? And that phone looks like double crossing you. That's all. He's gone out to send a wild lady Mary. And I gotta get back before he returns. See? Thanks, Captain. I got a taxi, Miss Mister Jim. Now take it easy, Lady Mary. You must prepare yourself for a shock. There's Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. His memory is gone. Let's get him home at once. I knew you'd say that. I'll get a car. I'll come with you. I must phone the doctor. Keep an eye on him, you. Where are they going? Got to get a car. A rib. Look here, Governor. Fat LaFone's on the crossing here. I know. Are you in with me? Count me in. The doctor said any shock would kill him. Can we get him away before they come back? Leave it to me. I'll take him to a place where he'll be forgot. Go on. get this Eden cell book. Reckon he pinched it in that fellow in Africa. Right. I'll take care of that. I'll just see that fellow's all right in there. And that fool, why doesn't he hurry? The phone and the girl will be here any minute. It's all right, our Luxie. Look here, are you sure we can get Ronnie to this place without being noticed? Sure, trust Grimes, don't trust Pat LaFool. Mary! Yes, James Mallory. Uh, don't lie yourself out of this. Get out of my way. You're not coming in this room. I warn you, get out of my way. No! Oh. Yeah. There, go on. I'll try you. <laughs> Sorry to have to interrupt you, Captain Darling. Lady Mary. Get him away. The car's outside. Knock twice on the door as you go. You double crosser. You dirty scum. That's enough from you. Go on, get up. Get on. Do you mind if I read? I can't bear the sight of you. Just as you like. Thanks. So simply. Ronnie, don't you remember? Home. Eden saw. Mary, what is this? Good heavens. Surely. Mother, something very strange has happened. This is the real Ronnie. The other. Ronnie. Ronald. Can you understand what this means? But how did he get here? Why is he like this? I don't know. But it's Ronnie. Of course he's Ronnie. Who should be more certain than I? Then who are you? And what have you been doing in his place? Oh, there's a lot to explain. But the part I have played, at least I had the right to play. A right? I think I can help. 
There are things I've known that have never told since Ronnie was born. But you go on with your story. All right. And then I'll go. But what have you got to tell? I was trekking through the Ashawan country when a frightened native informed us that a white man had fallen into the hands of a rebellious tribe. <laughs> We learned some strange things about one another. Well, old sport, how are you? Oh, not so bad. It's queer how fate has brought you and I together like this. Huh. I had no idea there was any secret in the governor's life. How could you? He believed that my mother, his first wife, I had no child. And for all these years I've been taking your place. Why didn't you claim your rights before? I only found out three weeks ago. My mother's old servant died in Cape Town. Before she went, she told me everything. An amazing story. As soon as I heard it, I pushed up country in the hope of finding you. I knew from the papers that you were here. Yes, I've been here before. I love Africa. How I hate to think of leaving it. Why should I leave it? What do you mean? I'm no longer the heir. But your father's dying. The cablegram said as much. I know, but how can I go? It should take weeks to get me to Cape Town as I am. True. But I can keep my promise. And still remain here. Listen. You go back. You take my place. You've a right to it. No one will know a thing. We're as like as two pins. Besides, we're both his sons, and you're the elder. You're mad. That's impossible. But I've never been sane in my life. It's up to you. It's your duty. If you don't, you'll force me to go on being an imposter. I see. Well, will you promise me one thing? That you'll give up all this risky stuff in the bush. And if I hate that job in England, you'll come back and take it over from me. All right. I promise. Just a minute. I've got to tell you more about myself, if you ought to get through. And now I'm going back to where I belong, Africa. It's all true. Your uncle married a woman in Cape Town, but she left him before the year was out. And he never knew that there was a son. I did. And I never told him. Heaven forgive me. You are that son, Ronald. If I were you, I wouldn't try any funny bits. You're very clever, Lafon. So far? What is it? Tell me! I took the 
as I said. I don't know. He told me he's got a way to tick you all. Ah! The curve. The pointing finger. Oh! Oh! Gugak! Exactly two minutes to beat it. Is it you? Oh man. I remember. The bush. Africa. I let you down that day. Can you ever forgive me, Ronnie? Forget it, Pat. Where's my brother? Brother? Of course, that's it. Brother. Ronald! Lady Mary! They're coming. Lady Mary and your brother. You! I'll explain later. Quick! There's no time to lose. Ronnie. Look after Mary, Ronald. I'm going. But you... You're today. You may travel the world over, but you'll have to go far before you find a place more beautiful than Egypt's.